So, you know, we've been talking about deer management and uh, I'll show you something pretty gross. It stinks worse than it looks. So there's nine deer there that we, we've shot. So that's kind of that's kind of what deer management looks like. We go out, um, Todd and I, of course, we can shoot, you know, a long ways. So it makes it easy for us to be able to go out, dispatch a bunch of does, a couple bucks. We got one junk mule deer buck in there and then one junk white tail. Got little old junker uh, uh, antlers on there and then some, just some older does. And so that was, it took us 45 minutes to go dispatch nine deer. And they'll take us about 45 minutes to gut all these deer and get them in the cooler. Um, we shot a bunch last night. Uh, they're, I hope they're out of the cooler because we're gonna fill the cooler up in a minute. But this is what deer management's all about. So we're not hunting. This is this is deer management. And you wonder why, you know, we always talk about, well, hunters, you know, they're, they're whatever hunters are, but this is just pure D stinking work. So anyways, I just want to see, let y'all see what, what work really looks like. And then to keep a good, healthy deer herd, it takes, you know, a lot of work. Um, this isn't, nobody likes to go shoot does. Nothing's fun but about shooting does, but it's, it's what you gotta do uh, to keep a healthy herd. Cause if you're not, you know, you just get too many of them and then they're all unhealthy. So, yep. All right, well, we're gonna get after gutting them. I'm Jason Abraham and welcome to the Mendota Ranch. So if you want to grow big deer, you need protein. You need alfalfa or something like it. You need wheat mids. You need a good supplemental feed. The neat thing about alfalfa is alfalfa starts growing in the springtime. It gets really good and green about February, into February or March. About the same time the deer are shedding their antlers and then it stays good all through the antler growth. So it's a, it's a good product. Now we don't keep, we don't keep, um, we, we don't keep the wheat mids out year round. We keep the wheat mids out about, oh, uh, we put them out about 1st of September and we keep it out to about the end of April. Cause truthfully the deer won't really touch the wheat mids through the summer months, you know, unless it's really, really dry, but it's a, that's a good product. And so well, I've got about 11 of these feeders. These feeders hold a ton each. Some of these feeders will last me, oh, a month. And then the feeders that are high traffic feeders, we're filling them up every two weeks. So we don't like to see them go empty. But you can add some wormer to these things to help you out if you need to. Um, I have some safeguard. I'll put some safeguard, mix some safeguard in there sometimes. And it works good, I think. We don't seem to see the bots in the nose of the deer like we used to. Um, yeah, so let me go show you the wheat mids and then the, the trailer we use to fill this thing up. So I want to show you how we fill the deer feeders up. This is a trailer that, um, of course you can buy them, but I have this one custom made and I'll tell you why in a minute. But this, this is uh, a machine that, actually has a let me just show you so it has a motor here that the motor runs a blower this is a blower and what happens is is the feed falls out down into this feeder and then it's blown up into this tube and then comes out right here so it's it, there's no augers involved it's just a blower and i guess that's why they call it a feed jet so yeah so i had but i had this one custom made this is about the same width as a, like a, a skid loader bucket or a tractor bucket, and there's no lid on there. Because what I do is I get my uh, commodities in instead of overhead bins. Let me show you an overhead bin. And most of them are made for overhead bins. So this is an overhead bin, okay? An overhead bin is something you normally, you pull under with a cake feeder, or you pull under with a, with a trailer like this, and the, and your feed, you just gravity flows in there. Well, what I've got a commodity barn here, and what I use is a skid loader. This is the pile of wheat mids. So we auger it in here, and this is what I call my commodity barn. So when I was 
uh, mix and feed, you know, for horses all the time. This is where I'd store a lot of alfalfa and different kinds of commodities. So this is wheat mids. So you can see the wheat mids here. They're just kind of, they smell really good. They smell kind of like cereal. Um, the pellets aren't very strong. They're pretty weak. But yeah, that is wheat mids. So most people say, well, where do you get the wheat mids? Stuff like that. Well, I get them at a commodity barn. But here's the deal with the with the wheat mids is if you don't need a semi load, they're kind of hard to get a hold of. So um, what I tell people is go look for like a um, a creep feed. Um, creep feed most creep feeds I know like high pros creep feed and stuff like that. Like ninety percent of it is wheat mids, and it's like a twelve or thirteen percent protein, and that works pretty good and it's pretty cheap. Used to used to this stuff here. I mean, used to we'd buy it all day long for 140, 150, 160 bucks a ton. Not anymore. It's a, it's pushing 300 now. I, don't, I haven't paid 300 yet, but I don't, it's getting, it's getting there. Here in a little bit, we're gonna go uh, dispatch some deer today, and everybody's gonna be asking, what gun is that? What gun do you use? So we do it a little different here, since we've got our way our terrain is, and since we do train snipers and we, um, we're long range shooters here. We all like to use that ability. And the main reason why is because you don't scare the deer. I can go out there and shoot, oh, eight or nine or 10 deer in one night in one, in one spot. And I, we don't even, the rest of the deer don't even get scared. So we don't get the deer all fuzzed up is I guess what I'm trying to say. And then also when we're sitting up that high, we can see and talk about it the deer and discuss them and, and make sure it's, a, it's a, the one we need to take. And then we also wait, like we'll wait to shoot deer to when they're by a road or they're close or easy to get to in the pickup. Cause we don't want to go out beating out through the pasture, picking up eight or nine deer and trying to find deer. So we just wait whether well, they're in a good spot we can pick up and then I'll dispatch them uh, from there. So usually the system we've got Todd's calling my dope and then I'm usually dispatching, and, and how we do it is this is what we use. Okay, so so this is my gun that I use mainly. This is a Night Force with a Night Force scope, 300 Norma. Um, this is a with a Thunder Beast um, can on there, and it's super quiet, super quiet gun. We use, these are Kestrels. This is what gives us our dope. So our dope, when I say our dope, that's what we hold for the day. So we range the deer and then we deter determine what the wind and everything else is and that's how we figure our dope. And this is what a 300 normal round looks like. So this is the 215 grain bullet. Uh, we've shot, uh, we normally don't do the 215 grain, but that's what we're shooting right now. Yeah, so everybody's gonna be asking me about that. So that's what it is, a 300 normal with a 215 grain bullet and then that's my Kestrel. Yeah, like so most of our shots, I'd say 90% of our shots are around 800 to a thousand meters i have shot out the longest kill i've had was uh uh 3290 meters i do have that on video oh, oh he's hit he's hit he's hit that's a that was a long shot we norm we normally don't do it that far. The really only reason we shot that one was because that buck, we were really been after that buck. He was a good buck, but he was just a, a freaking turd. He was beating up all the other deer, and we just, we we just didn't like his attitude. So um, that's why the reason we took him out and went such extreme distance for him. And it's nice to be able to do that because, like I said, you just don't get the deer all messed up. They don't get all excited and 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 pissed off. And so we can get out there and get a lot of deer down but it is a lot of work a lot of work we donate all this meat to uh, local families in town here that request it um so we'll be and like this year alone we'll shoot i think about eight mule deer and about 60 whitetail so we got a lot of deer to take care of but we really our deer numbers have really gone up a bunch well, hopefully I helped you a little bit out. Um, if you're looking to, you know, grow big deer, it's it's pretty simple. Number one, you gotta keep your numbers right. And the way you do that is you do game surveys, you do um, browse surveys, and then you go out and dispatch a lot of does and a few bucks. 
when you when you get those extra tags, it's important that you go ahead and dispatch the what I call junker bucks. So for us, it used to be, you know, years ago, it was like, well, six points. We'd get six points or we'd get some, like an odd number rack. I mean, we're to the point now where we shoot, if it's a mature deer and it's only an eight point, we're shooting it. Now, a lot of people say, hey, Jason, I can't age deer like you. I don't know how to age deer. Well, he, here's the trick I tell everybody. If you look at a buck and you just cover his antlers up, okay, and all you can see is body, and you, if you can't tell if it's a buck or a doe, if it looks like a doe with, a, with no antlers, it's immature. If you can cover his antlers up, you know, with your hand and tell by just looking at his body that it's a buck, he's a mature deer. So that's a pretty simple way to, to, to be able to decipher. It's like, all right, he's got a buck of a, he's got a body of a buck and he's got crappy antlers, take him out, okay? because he's not doing you any favors. The argument is, well, the, you know, the, the big deer, they only, you know, they only breed so many, and that's true. The average is 1.8, 1.4, something like that, but I promise you those big deer are getting a few more than that. Little supplemental feed, don't feed corn. Corn is not your friend. Corn is not good for deer. I understand if you're baiting, go ahead and bait and just keep it to a very minimum. Don't, you don't want the deer to be eating too much corn. And don't be one of those landowners that uh, put your, deer feeder 100 feet from the neighbor's fence you know don't be that guy no you need to take a lot of does out and no it's going to take you a lot of years to get to where like where we worked a lot of years on what we do um to be able to get you know big deer like mendo to max and all these other deer we get to see and of course mendo to max is he's a once in a lifetime deer mendo to max is my dream deer you know just a big old seven by seven with some drop tines um he's just a big old cool deer and you know i doubt that we'll ever see another deer like him but yep drop me some comments let me know what i can do to help you out uh i hope i explained the wheat mids the wheat mids come from a flour meal and from the flour meal i go to a commodity barn to get the wheat mids if you can't if you need it just in the bags go look for um creep feed creep feed is mostly wheat mids just go look at the ingredients it's mostly wheat mids but any kind of feed you can get that's like you know, 12% protein to 14% protein is all you need. Um, and then alfalfa. Man, if you can plant alfalfa, alfalfa is, that's the ticket. That alfalfa grows big on horns, and the deer love it. And it stays green most of the winter. Um, it's pretty good stuff. Let me know what you think. Hope you, get, hope you like my deer. I'll, I'll put up a lot of deer videos.